name is going to be brought up. Just keep dreaming. You can be seated. Just keep dreaming. Just keep believing. And it's on you to know that your name is going to be brought up. So today, as we did this series on Out of the Box, um, it has given many of you all time to get clarity in your life and in the way that God wants to take you. Um, today, we want to talk about you must dream something that is out of the box. If you look up the definition of dream, you can look at the screen. It says a succession of images, thoughts, emotions passing through the mind is passing through your mind while you sleep. It's passing through your mind, warning your body of what your future going to look like. Mm -hmm. So many dreamers in the Bible. You ready? Abraham didn't start dreaming until after he was 75. So for everyone that believes that it's too late for you, you really just started. Mm. Jacob, the trickster, believed and dreamed that he can have better. Solomon was a wise man, but still had dreams. Joseph, Mary's husband, had dreams for clarity and direction in the steps that he had to take to protect the promise. Ananias was a dreamer who laid hands on Paul who would eventually take over the church. Peter, the second man who would take over the church, had dreams about the change and the charge of the church. How many of y'all know that God has put something in you that has not become your reality as of yet? Come on, I need you to open your mouth and identify yourself and say, I'm a dreamer, I'm a, come on, say it again, I'm a dreamer. Today we will deal with Joseph who dreamed completely out of the box. But it started with a small box. A small box. Why a small box? If you look at the scripture, the Bible says in Genesis 37, it only says it twice when it comes to Joseph's life. Joseph had a dream. Go down to the ninth verse. And the Bible says, then he had another dream. Stop right there. Your mind can only hold so much as far as what God is promising you. Hear me clearly. It is bigger than what you even think. If he revealed it all to you, you will mess it up. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or even come on here. And it's, it, it's small in your mind. Watch me. But it's bigger in your reality. God, I wish I was in the room with some dreamers. I pray that some of you all that are online right now, watch me. I just need you to worship God that at least he thought enough of you to put it right there. It's a lot of people not having dreams but having nightmares. But if you know that God put something in your spirit, come on here, and it's not your reality yet, we walk by faith and not by sight. Those of you that are holding something in your mind, in your spirit, that you believe is going to be your reality, can you lift your hands and worship God for what shall come to pass? I need to hear worship, and it shall come to pass. I need to hear worship, and it shall come to pass. Some of y'all, you closer this year than you were five years ago. Come on, lift your hands. Come on here, encourage yourself in the Lord and say, and it shall come to pass. So it starts off in your mind, in your mind. And it's bigger than what you're even thinking about. And then once you accept it, then things begin to shift. Then it goes to a bigger box. Come on, let's talk for a minute. In other words, your dreams, pay attention, have to be purified during the trials of your life. In other words, I got to shape you to fix it. 
I'm going to say that again. I have to shape you to fix what I've put in you. I have to make you who I need you to be. Because what I put in you, you're not quite there yet. Oh my God. That's why I didn't put a time limit on it. Because I need you to give me time to make you who I created you to be, to walk in the purpose and the assignment. Those of you all that know that he's working on you. Namashi. Come on here. He's making you into something you can't even believe. I might not be everything that I should be, but I know I'm not who I used to be. And it's not me, it's God working on me. Can you make sure you're sitting in the dreaming section? Can you make sure you're not sitting in the nightmare section? Can you look at somebody and say, we are dreamers. Come on, I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody who believe your ladder is going to be greater, who believe that God has already ordered your steps. So one day when he's walking up on his brothers, for every dream, I need you to be prepared to be mocked. His brothers say, look at here. Here come that little dreamer. <laughs> Here come that little dreamer. And I need some of y'all to be okay with the criticism that goes with your dreams. Because there's certain things that God's going to allow you to go through that you have to control. I, got, I, I have to be able to control me to get where I'm going. This is why I don't have time to worry about anybody else's business because I'm too busy working on... Because I got to be who he's already showed me. So the next box, we call it the physical box. You have to hear me now. Because this is the thing to get me. The man only had... I can't even call him a man. The Bible says he was 17 years old. The boy only had a dream. And from a dream, you hate me. If you're hating from a dream, what are you going to do with me when I get to my reality? And the Bible says that when they saw him, they say, here come the dreamer. And then they literally put their hands on him. And literally, come on, let's look at this. In Genesis 37 and 23, so when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe that his father had given him, the ornament robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into another box, a cistern, another box. The cistern, this other box is bigger than the smaller box. It was empty though and there was no water in it. They literally put their hands on him and some of y'all, God will allow people to push you to make sure that you don't push back. This is the physical box that you cannot catch a case. Come on here. Because you cannot be known as a fighter. You cannot be known as a violent individual. Watch me. And it's not that you can't whoop them. Come on here. But God won't let me put my paws on you. Because what you mean? This fight don't go with my purpose or my destiny. Is there anybody that God made you bring your body under subjection? I, I might not be able to hit you, but I'll shake you until your teeth click. Some of y'all know you got a temper. If you don't lift your hands in this building and tell God, keep my hands to me. Keep my hands to me. I'm in this physical box. Some of y'all, you keep jumping out the box. I need you to get back in the box and bring your body right back under subjection. Those in the building and those online, I need you to hear me. I need you to just type it on the screen. And if you're in the building, I need you to tell your neighbor, this battle is not yours. 
It's the Lord's. You don't have to fight nobody. You don't have to push nobody. You just need to stand still and you gonna see that he's a God of war. The physical box. The physical box. It ain't just about not fighting. It's not just about catching a case. Because the Bible says he's a handsome young man. And the Lord is with him when he's in Potiphar's house. So he's successful. You good looking and successful. Come on here, y'all. Some of y'all didn't start looking good until you became successful. Because <laughs> success makes you look good. And favor is on your life. You look good, you got favor, and you're successful. You mean you look good, you successful, and you got favor? And the Bible says, and the Lord was with him in Potiphar. And whatever he put his hands to do. Come on, y'all, let's talk. And the next thing you know, Sister Potiphar. Sister Potiphar, Potiphar's wife, starts approaching this single young man that looked good, got favor, and successful, and the Lord is with him. Oh, y'all better read y'all Bible. And watch me. And it wasn't just a one time pull your strap down. It wasn't just a one time walk by and let him see the bump. I mean, I mean, um. <laughs> see, the devil, he don't just come once. He keeps trying you. I wish I had somebody here that'd be honest with me. If you look at the scripture, can I show you something the Bible says in Genesis 39 and 10? And though she spoke to Joseph, they after day, which means that every day he went to work, there goes Sister Potiphar wearing Victoria's Secret, putting on lotion, smelling like peaches and cream. I like peaches and cream. <laughs> day after day, it's not that she wants him, she wants his favor. She wants his success. She don't want him. She want what makes him him. And day after day, this woman kept coming after him. Here's my line, though, because I'm in this physical box. He refused to go to bed with her. Here's my line. Here's my line. Or even play with her in the inbox. I mean, um, 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 or even be with her in her mind or even mess with her mind. Some of y'all, I need you to know, I got to stay in the physical box to bring my body under subjection because if I don't learn how to say no now before I get my dream because dreams is going to bring more temptation. So I be Beat my body, bring it under subjection. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing to me. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing to me. Is there anybody? You could have did it, but you chose not to do it. So in the physical box, you have to learn how to possess your vessel. Learn how to possess your body in honor and sanctification. And I need some of y'all to hold on to your body like Because your hormones are going wild and everything's trying to come out the box, but I need you to hold the box under control. Because I refuse to give up my future. For I would rather suffer the afflictions of the righteous than to enjoy. Because it is enjoyable. I didn't enjoy it. Stop lying. But the enjoyment is only for a season. 
So then after he brings his body under subjection, then he gets to go to the third box. So I get the dream. I get my body under subjection. But then there's one thing that if I don't learn to control, it'll mess up everything. And it's called the verbal box. Somebody put their whole hand over their mouth. Like, oh, God. I ain't fornicating, but I'm running my mouth. Oh, God. So Sister Potiphar reached for Jake, Joseph, and he ran. She grabbed his robe. And then she started lying on him. That slave boy. Oh, now I'm a slave. That ain't what you said when you had me in that room. <laughs> See, when they, when they want to pin you to the wall, it's a whole nother label over you. And that's why you have to know who you are at all times and not let anybody tell you who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, you'll be consistently defending yourself. So she lies, she lies, she lies. She says he attempted to rape her. And in Genesis 39 and 19, it says, when his master heard the story, the story, the story, because he never heard the truth, his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me? Oh, I'm a slave now, but I was a hot boy a few minutes ago. <laughs> He burned with anger. Joseph took matters. I'm sorry, Joseph master took him and put him in prison, which is a bigger box. The place where the king's prisoners were. So now this box is the prison box. <laughs> the prison box. And the only thing that need to be locked down right now is your mouth. Because when, when they came to get Joseph, he could have said, hold on now, Potiphar. Let me tell you about Mother Potiphar. <laughs> it's some holes in this house. It's some holes. When they would have been coming to my room, I would have hit play. There's some holes in this house. He could have, he could have cursed Potiphar out and sister Potiphar. He could have said, she lied. Trust me, she lied. Now, some of y'all would have hit, had your phone in the corner trying to record her. You would have screenshot what she, what she sent you. Because you need to build up your evidence. But what if God wants you to be quiet? Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me now. What if God said, I want you to shut your mouth. You ain't got to defend yourself. You don't have to put anything out there. You know and I know that you are innocent. So the next time somebody say something crazy about you, I need you not to defend yourself. I need you to shut your mouth and know that no weapon formed against you is going to be able to. He didn't cuss nobody out. And I got to stop right here. Because the saints is cussing. <laughs> you don't even look like you curse. But I need some of y'all to reach over and take your neighbor. We buying cursing in this section. Some of y'all scared to touch them because you got cussed out on your way here. Listen. 
It's the verbal box that I have to control my mouth. It's the verbal box that I can't curse you because you cursed me. It's the verbal box because the, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. And if I don't say something good, I don't need to say anything at all. It is the mouth of the righteous. It's the verbal box. Instead of a curse, I need to put a blessing. We bless those that curse. So for the curses, the Lord told me to give you a scripture. It's not going to come up on the screen, and I want you to hear me. I, too, used to be a cursor. I got put out of McDonald's every day in high school for cussing and clowning in McDonald's. But then when I got saved, I read the scripture that checked me, and it's in James 3, verses 9 and 10. Just listen to it. It's not going to come on the screen. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness, out of the same mouth come praises and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. That's Bible. You cannot tell me that you on Facebook and Instagram cussing. You cannot tell me that you cussing your kids out, calling them bees and all kind of whores. And you mean to tell me that you want God to make them a mighty man and a woman of God? You validate them with your speech. So he never curse. Watch me. You got to get this one. He never complained. He never complained. When his brother stripped him, he didn't complain. When he was thrown in the pit, he didn't complain. When he was sold into slavery, he didn't complain. When he was working around Potiphar's house, he was not complaining. When he was lied on, he was not complaining. Come on here. He never let a complaint come out of his mouth. And some of you all, I need you to hear me. You got to be careful that you don't get a spirit of complaint. You so busy complaining that you can't even see how God is with you. I don't care where you put me. I see the hand of God in my life. And rather than a complaint, I would rather be like Paul and Silas. When they in jail, they prayed and sang praises unto God. Watch me. Because what come out of your mouth, shake foundations. What come out of your mouth, open gates. What come out of your mouth, break chains. Come on, y'all, I need you to lean in with me because I need your positive words to outrun your negative words. I need you, you dreamers to open your mouth. The Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. You have to learn how to speak well over yourself. You have to know that all things are going to work together for my good. Those of y'all that know that God is up to something great in your life, Come on, let's begin to speak over one another. Can you do me a favor online in the building? Can you look at somebody and say, our ladder is going to be greater. Come on, look at somebody and say, your better days are ahead of you. Come on, look at somebody and tell them no weapon formed against you is going to be able to prosper. Come on, look at somebody and say, I promise you, you have an expected ending and your ending is going to be better than your beginning. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I don't care what you're going through right now. You feel like you're in a box, but what God's about to do. Come on, you dreamers, please. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you I need a praise to outrun your negativity. I need a praise to outrun your complaint. I need a praise to outrun something you said crazy this week. Those of you that know that God's been good to you, watch me, and he's going to do exactly what he showed you. Come on here. It does not appear yet, but he's going to blow your mind. Lift your hands and open your mouth and release a praise right there.
Come on, y'all. Please obey me in the spirit. Please obey me in the spirit. Because some of y'all, I got to refresh your dream. I have to let you know that God's not done with you yet. Come on, I have to let you know that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God's going to do in you. Come on, y'all. Do me a favor in the building. Touch somebody and say, I'm a dreamer. We a dreamer. We are dreamers. And our promise is going to be fulfilled. So, it started with a dream. He put me in the box and he got my physical under control. He got my physical under control. Then he put me in a bigger box, which is a bigger challenge to get my verbal under control. To get my verbal under control. To get my verbal under control. Because he told the children of Israel, I am going to give you exactly what I heard you say. I am going to give you exactly what I heard you say. So I had to learn how to control my, my tongue. And then there's a mental box. That's a mental box. A mental box. Watch me. Please listen to me. The Bible says you have, you have to get this, this mental box. So he helps. I can't see. This, this, this is the part where some of us lose it. Because the hardest thing is for you to help somebody. And then when it comes time for them to help you, they can't be found. So he, you know, he interprets the dream for the cup there. And he tells the cup bro, 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 when you get out of here, just remember me. Bring my name up. Don't forget about me. Is there anybody that owe you a favor? Y'all ain't going to be honest. Is there anybody that owe? I had your back, doggone it. You better have mine. And, and the Bible says, and the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot about him. Now watch this mental box. Watch me. He didn't just forget about him for a day. If you go to the very next chapter, the Bible says, in two years, when two full years had passed, do you know how you got to control your mind? Waiting mentally, mentally. Some of us, we good physically, we good verbally, but the mind. Because watch me, I got to control my mind when I see other people being blessed. I got to control my thoughts and make sure that jealousy and envy don't get in me. Well, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. So I actually, I told you all, I go see a therapist, and I begin to talk about some things I was going through. He says, John, let's explain the difference between envy and jealousy. Envy is when somebody wants what you have. Jealousy is when somebody is um, basically upset that somebody going to get what they used to have. And you are about to invade some territory. You better hear me clearly that you have to learn how to deal with envy and jealousy. But watch me, you can't, you, but you can't be that. You have to learn how to control the pressure of your mind. For those of y'all, I need you to hear me. There were times when God had me waiting to do this. I knew I was called to do this, but mentally he had me on hold. In my 30s, I thought I was tripping. I tried to make it happen when he told me to wait. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Because I begin to see younger people pass me by. Watch me. And they were inviting me to come in their churches and speak over their people. And then when I told one of the younger preachers, I think God called me the pastor. He said to me, well, why would you want to do something like that? That thing messed with my mind. When I walked out of church, I said, yo, mama, listen, there is something. See, y'all want to be fake. I'm trying to be real. I had to bring my mind under subjection. I had to not let that thing get the best of me. Watch me. Because the next year, he invited me back. And I had to go back in there and do what I do. Y'all not saying that to me? Because the true test of obedience is not when you do what you want to do, but when you're told to do what you really don't want to do. And that is the battle of the minds to bring your... Because if I can control my mind, I can control my verbal. And if I can control my mind I can control my physical and if I can control my mind I can remember the dream that God gave me and if I can control my mind I can see every step that I've been in God has been with me every step of the way is there anybody in the building or online you have not arrived yet but when I look back over my life this I recall to my mind therefore have I hope it is of the Lord 
God's mercies that I am not consumed. Great is. Get on your feet in the building. Get on your feet in the building. Get on your feet in the building. Get on your feet. Ernest thing started with a dream, but I had to get my body under control. Once I got my body under control, I had to monitor my verbal, then I had to get my mind. I had to get my mind right. And while, I, while everything is aligning itself, by everything, I'm maturing. Come on here. I'm maturing. Because my seat demands a mature individual. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I can't be a baby in that seat. I can't be a weak person in that seat. I can't give in to every temptation. I can't let everything come out of my mouth. And I got to control my thoughts knowing that my ladder is going to be greater. And then one day, while he's in the box, while he's in the box, while he's in the box, his name is being brought up. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I've been telling y'all for over for years to release your name in the spirit realm. Because if you release your name wherever you are, it goes into your future. And it brings you up at the right time after you have brought your body under subjection. Everybody lift your hands and say your name three times. 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 I want you to look at the scripture that we saw in Proverbs 8 and 16, and we got it out of the Living Bible. It says, a gift does wonders. A gift does wonders. A gift does wonders. It brings you before men of importance. If you keep doing what you're doing, I said last night in my devotion, your dream cannot become your reality until you make somebody else's dream become their reality. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Your dream cannot become your reality until you make somebody else's dream become their reality. That's why he had to make sure that he, he, he used his gift for the cupbearer. He had to use his gift for the chief baker. Now he has to use his gift for Pharaoh. But what if he was sitting up to him, but I'm not supposed to be here. No, you got to make somebody else's dream become their reality, and it's going to make your dream. So one day, he goes in front of Pharaoh. And I keep telling some of y'all, please hear me. When it's your time, don't you sit in your box. The Bible says, Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he was quickly. And I keep telling some of y'all, if you do right, your life gonna change. Quickly, quickly. And he was brought quickly from the dungeon. And when he had shaved and changed his clothes, why are you changing? Because you can't look like you've been in prison. Because you're about to stand in front of royalty. And you didn't buy the clothes. Obviously, somebody had to give them to you. And he came before Pharaoh. Watch me. And he did what he do. He did what he do. I didn't call you to be anybody else. I called you to be you. You want to hear something? You want to hear something? I had never heard of that band. Never. I had never heard of the Red Hands band. But somebody brought their name up. Stop. While they were doing what they do, what they do, you're about to be called to do what you do. Please don't stop doing you. 
Just control your body, control your mouth, and control your mind. And as a result of that, he did what he do. Huh. See, there's no lid on this box. There's room on this box. Why is there so much room in this box? Because what God's going to give me in this box could never fit in the other boxes. Y'all better hear what I'm about to say to you. I need you to hear me. Your gift is about to pay off. Your, you bringing your body under subjection is about to become a pay off. Your verbal is about to come. Look at this scripture. <laughs> so sir, I said to you, sir, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Can somebody do me a favor? I need you to turn to somebody or you can say it online. You're about to put in, be put in charge. Come on, I need you to, come on, yeah. You can be trusted now. I need you to, come on, y'all. Come on, 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 come on. I feel sorry for everybody that played you because you're about to be put in charge. I need you to look over at somebody. Somebody, you've been feeling like God forgot about you, but this is your word. You're about to be put in charge. And Pharaoh took his signet ring. <laughs> what is that? That's like his credit card, which means that you're about to have no limits financially. He's about to exceed your expectation financially. I need those of you all, I don't care what your credit score is, but God's about to put you. Okay, this is supernatural stuff. And he dressed him. And he dressed him in a robe. Uh-uh, hold on. And he dressed him in robes. Let's stop, let's stop. My brothers took a coat, but God gave me robes. Some of y'all fighting over a coat. If you release the coat, you can get your robes. And then put, hold on. You're gonna have a little bling bling. Why does God have me here? Everything he gave me here, hold on. Then the Bible says, he told you, I also give you a horse, a chariot, and an announcer, which what I'm gonna give you in this box could never fit in those boxes. This was your, this exceeded your dream. I'm coming for you. I'm about to come for you. It's waiting on you. Look at me. But I can't give you this box if you can't control your flesh. I can't give you this box if you can't control your mouth. I can't give you this box if you can't even control your thoughts. What sort of things are just? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? You got to think on these things. How do I do it? How do I do it? You can't do this on your own. There's no good thing in your flesh. Jesus says, I must leave so the comforter, so the helper can come. Anybody that know that you got, that God gave you control over your flesh, come on here, you didn't control your flesh. The Holy Ghost. 
Edama se Shike Yandara. Getting married doesn't control your flesh. I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. I need him, I need him, I need him. I need him, I need him. I need a closer walk with God. I need to be closer to God than I've ever been in my life. Come on, everybody, lift your hands and say, I need him, 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 I need him. Please, please listen to me. Please listen to me. If you weren't at 4 a.m. prayer, if you didn't listen to it, when I got up Tuesday morning, the Lord began to speak to me. Normally, he gives me what I need to pray about on Mondays. Because as an intercessor, if you're going to lead people into prayer, you have to pray about what you're supposed to pray about. And Monday, he normally speaks to me, but then he didn't say nothing Monday. I toss in my sleep. My alarm goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I wake up, the Lord says, I need you to pray that they get they seek back. Because the pandemic has caused many of my people to lose their seek. I need you to pray that they get they draw back. Because if you draw not a God, he'll draw not a you. And then I need you to pray that they get their love back because they've lost the, their first love. And I came, as I was studying the list, the Lord says, I need to, I need to refill some people. I need to get back, they need to get back close to me because their dreams await them. If you know that I'm talking to you, Get out of your seat and you meet me on this altar. You've been complaining, you better get out your seat. You've been talking crazy, the enemy has been attacking your mind. Get out of your seat. Some of you are angry and your anger is causing you to remain in certain boxes. Get out of your seat. Get out of your seat. Get out of your seat. It takes a mature person to admit I'm a little out of control. Oh, if you release me, I can go further in the spirit. Come on. Physical is that you've been feeding your flesh things that you're not supposed to have. We bind the spirit of alcohol and substance abuse. God breaks soul ties. Because everybody didn't walk away from Potiphar's wife. Some slept with her. You have to hear me. The only way that you can do this, the only way that you can make it, and that your dream become your reality is that God has to help you walk this thing out. You have to hear me. You have to hear me. You will see it. You will touch it. You will experience it. But you must be prepared for it. Because if I give it to you and you're not ready, then you won't have it long. You will mess it up in a short period of time. When I want to give you favor for a lifetime. for the rest of your life. Lift your hands and close your eyes. Help us. Help us. Help me. Help me. Keep my body under subjection. 
Help me to control the words that come out of my mouth. Help me in my thought pattern. God, I don't want to be a negative individual. I don't want to be, come on, y'all, you got to pray this prayer. Help me. Every mother pray. Every older person pray. Every young person pray. Please, come on. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Lift your hands in for a few minutes. Come on, from your soul, from your inner man, you ask God to help you be everything that he created you to be. Hear me, something big awaits you. Something amazing awaits you. You have no idea what God's going to do for you. Hold on, my son. So lift your hands online and in the building. So here's my body. Here's my body. God, help me to keep my body under subjection. There's no good thing in my flesh. Here's my mouth. Make my mouth a well of life. Help me to speak life. Help me to speak with authority. Help me, God. Come on, help me to prophesy. Help me to pray. Come on, let, let, let praise come out of my mouth. Help me. Come on, help me. Help me. Come on, everybody lay hands on your head right now. You lay hands on your own head. God, hold my mind together. Hold my mind together. God, help me, God, to resist the enemy. When the enemy come into my thought pattern, you said resist the devil and he will flee. Help me not to accept everything that the enemy put in my thought pattern. But God, give me the ability to rebuke the devil out of my mind. Because once lust is conceived in the mind, it brings forth sin. And once sin is finished, it brings forth death and the enemy want to start killing me in my mind so God I present my mind I'm ready I'm ready have your way Holy Ghost creativity to flow again I'm ready for God's will to be done in my, my in my life I'm ready for get out of certain boxes and be everything that God created me to be I'm ready get the glory out of my life I'm ready come on we about to leave in a few minutes I'm ready Anybody ready for a shift? Anybody ready for God to give me my seat back? Give me my draw back? Give me my love back so that I can be everything that you created me to be? Lift your hands and say, yeah! The Lord wants a complete yes from you today that you'll submit to what he's put in you. You'll never be like anybody else. You'll only be who God created you to be. He needs a complete yes from you. On the count of three, I need you to release the loudest yes you have. Then I need you to begin to praise God that he's beginning to work on you. Your body is changing. Your confessions are changing. Your mind is changing. And he's getting you ready. And I decree and I declare that 2022 will be the year of enlarging your territory. That you will have more than enough room to hold everything that God has for you in your life. All he needs is a yes today. On the count of three, release a yes. One, two, three. Yay! My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Come on, if you need to get somebody
somebody out of your spirit. I need you to reach in their name and leave it on the altar. Break this soul tie. Come on. My soul says yes. Help me, Lord. Help me to be who you created me to be. Help me to walk in my purpose. Help me to walk in my dream. Help me to live the life you called me to be. Help me to be who you created me to be. I bring my mind, my body, my, 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 my tongue under subjection, and I submit to you. Lift your hands and say, yay! Come on, we're going to leave in a few minutes. Can you do me a favor? Can you lay hands on the shoulder of somebody next to you and say, let's worship together. Let's worship for where we're going, not where we are. Leave your hand there and just begin to worship together. Come on, there it is. Come on, let's worship together. You can't have your dream until you help somebody else fulfill their dream. Pray for the hand that you're holding. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Say under the basique. Rondo da bosiki under the under the bosi under the under the bosi. Come on, we almost done. Give me ten more seconds. Give me ten more seconds. With your hand on somebody else's shoulder. And you're praying with them. And you're praying with them. And you're praying with them. I cover your dream. I cover your assignment. I cover your call. I cover what you were created to do. I call greatness to come out of you. You are a mighty man of God. God is not done with you yet. I pray a Caleb anointing be upon you. Come on, we almost done. Yay! You cannot have your dream until you help somebody fulfill their dream. I pray your ladder be greater. I pray that doors open for you. I pray that every chain be broken. I pray that every chain be broken. I pray that you be closer to God than you've ever been in your life. Now let them go and release the best praise you have.
Your dream cannot become your reality until you help somebody else's dream become their reality. Your dream cannot become your reality until you help somebody else's dream become their reality. There are five people in this service. You cannot do this without God, number two, and then you got to be in the right birthing room. You have to be in the right environment for your dream to be birthed to become your reality. You cannot afford to be in a place that's aborting your dreams. And if you know that I am talking to you, you stay on the altar. Everybody else on your way back to your seat, look at somebody and tell them, your dream will be your reality. Because you're out of the box. And five people, you stay on this altar. You get out of your seat and you meet me on the altar. that's in the building lift your hands and worship God if you know that you have not arrived totally there yet lift your hands and worship God by faith for five seconds he's a keeper yes he is <laughs> he's a keeper there's someone online listen you can actually join, you can get saved virtually. You'll see a prayer on the screen and you can do that there. There are at least seven of you online. I need you to pray that prayer, then I need you to text the words NLC. You're gonna text the words New Life to 91694. 91694. Can I hear worship just for 10 seconds? Glory. Wow, you dream carriers. All things are going to work together for your good. If you believe that release of praise, some of y'all, I'm amazed that you're still alive. Because certain things were designed to kill you, but you are still in the land of the living. I'm still amazed that you in your right mind. It didn't work. It didn't work. Now let's get our tithes and our offering in our hand. Get your tithes and offering ready. If you read, um, when they threw him into the pit, they said that the, that the fall should have killed him. And there's some things that the enemy thought were going to kill you, but God cushioned your fall. Come on. I need you to be faithful over a few things. For those that are online, those that are in the building, I need you to get your tithes and your offering ready. For those that are online, I need you to sow a seed into your dream. What is that seed? He gives a seed to the sower. Some of y'all can sow 25, some can sow 50, some can sow 100. That's on you, because he gives a seed to the sower. Those in the building, I need you to get your tithes ready. Then I need you to give us a seed on your dream. On your dream. 
What's in you? What has God promised you? I need you to sow into where you're going, not where you are. You're sowing into where you're going, not where you are. If you're going to text it, you text the words N-O-C-S-E to 91694. If you're on our app, that is one of the best ways to give. If you're on our website, that's another way to give. Those on Facebook, those on YouTube, you text your C. You text the words N-L-C-S-E to 91694, but you make it happen. How many of know that God's going to blow your mind? He's going to exceed your expectation. Come on, get your seat ready. Once you have your seat ready, come on, stand to your feet. Those of y'all that have um, an envelope, you have a, uh, whatever, there's a drop box on the way out and you can sew it. Do me a favor. And hold the music for one minute. Those in the building, lift your hands. There's a sound of worship that needs to come out of the, the promise. Open your mouths. Hold the music one minute. Hold the music one minute. Hold the music one minute. Come on, there you go. Get your promise back. Get your dream back. Get your dream back. I'm begging you, get your dream back. It is not over for you. Do you hear me? It is not over for you. He's preparing you for something amazing. And it's bigger than what you thought. Lift your seed up to the Lord and repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver, and I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are we going to live it? For the rest of my life. I love you all. Listen, listen, listen. If you have children, you bring them back here. We have a safe space for our children. Um, I want to make sure that we minister to our own kids, that they don't have to go outside and mingle and put their lives in danger. It's going to be at 3 o'clock. You're going to make it happen. Um, I love you all. If you have guests from out of town, give me a minute. I'm going to change shirts, and I'll meet you in the lobby area under that tent. God bless you. I love you all. Give me an air hug. Everybody, can I get an air hug? I ain't got nothing but love for you.